Right, uh, hi there. Uh, this is just going to be a little uh, quick update. Won't be too long at all. Uh, we've hit a snag. Um, it seems as though the uh, coolant that's in the uh, water table is quite conductive. <clears throat> Which, sorry, I've got, I'm not very well, I've got a bit of a cold. Um, man flu. Uh, it seems to be quite conductive, which means the uh, capacitive sensor um, is misfiring. Uh, it's, it's not always great to use capacitive um, or ohmic, shall we say, uh, sensors with a water table anyway. The water gets on the nozzle, it shorts out anyway, um, but it seems as though the uh, additive that we've put with the water has uh, exasper exacerbated? exacerbated the problem. Um, so what we've done is that, or what I've done pretty much overnight, uh, is to add a uh, floating head setup. Now believe you me, this is made out of bits that I've just cobbled together that I've got lying around. Um, it really isn't a permanent solution. Uh, what I'd like to do is use a little bit of um, high wind rail uh, and then just one high wind bearing which will make it all nice and light because the problem with uh, floating head situations or floating head setups is that it can put quite a bit of pressure on the on the on the material so if you're cutting something uh, light like 0.8 or 1 mil yeah, maybe not so much 1 mil but um, you know light stuff then there is a chance that the torch will sort of deflect into the material and then it's back off is not equivalent to the rebound height of the material, if you know what I mean. Um, so uh, this is just a quickie, just to um, show you that we've got the floating head. And that's we've still got collision detect on there, um, but the floating head is like that. So it's just a couple of bits of um, 16 mil rail, uh, SBR, a little washer to, as a stop there. And to make the torch a little lighter, you might be able to see in there, um, I've put in a spring. Just to take a little bit of weight off the torch because the coils with the uh, cable does make, a, make it quite heavy. Uh, we have got it working. Uh, um, it's been an arse ache, uh, to say the least, because I didn't want this to happen. Uh, we had so many miscuts. Um, you can see some there. Uh, and that's purely because the ohmic sense wasn't it just wasn't doing its job it was it was just getting all confused a little bit like me in my old age so uh, we had to sort it out and we had to sort it out quick sharp we've got a lot of cutting coming up i mean a lot of cutting this machine is probably going to be running flat out for maybe three weeks just cut 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 we've got orders backing up um that we're trying to trying to fulfill so you can see that uh, that is a little bit of a major problem uh, it's floating head. I've always been a bit of a fan of floating head. Uh, Omic seems uh, seems like wizardry to me, uh, but with this um, additive that's in the water, it has just made it unusable. Uh, with my plasm, you can actually use both. So if one doesn't work, uh, it will then default to the other, which is quite nice if it, if it works. <laughs> but uh, when you're cutting thin material, if you still get water on the torch, it's still going to use the floating head um, situation, uh, you know, the floating head uh, mechanism, software, whatever. Uh, and, of course, it's going to still have that problem of deflecting the material when the head goes down. So, yeah, I don't quite see the point. It does say in the MyPlasm documentation that you can use both. Uh, I'm struggling to see a reason to use both. Anyhow, I thought I would just give you uh, that update. Uh, it's it's been a little bit of a trial, but it's uh, but it is all working. We've had to remake a whole bunch of parts, or I have, uh, and it, it functions. Uh, what I'll do is in the, I'll do a little video um, soon of it working, and then you can just see. We will just run tests, or we'll just run a few cuts, uh, and you'll be able to see exactly what the uh, what the score is. But suffice it to say. I'm going to get my meter out and I'm going to measure the conductivity of the additive just to see if, it's, um, if it is more conductive than straightforward water. I don't know. It, it, just, it was the only thing that we could see that we'd done different that actually um, makes a difference, if you see what I mean. So 
Yeah, a couple of tor torch mounts later, a little bit of jiggery pokery, a little bit of, uh, you know, some sense of bracket making, um, made that one. That still works really, really well. I know um, people are going to say, well, I don't know who the people are, but um, somebody will say, one person is definitely going to say, um, if the torch um, gets a clobbering from this side, uh, it's going to knock that sensor. Well, it doesn't. Um, what seems to happen, it seems to pivot on the bottom uh, locator and it breaks away at the top. This goes out, machine stops. So, yep, that's, uh, it does work. Even if it hits here, actually, this is plenty strong enough, and so is the sensor strong enough, uh, to take that hit as the, as the top of the torch breaks out. So, it works. Um, is it ideal? Probably not. Should I think of something else? Probably. Uh, but, you know, we've, we've got to make do and mend, as my grandmother used to say. So, we've just got to make, make do with what we got so we can get going as fast as possible. So, there's your little update. That's a little, uh, little bit of a a ship to deal with uh, please like and subscribe if you like the content um, and leave uh, by all means leave messages and I'll get back to you as soon as you can okay take care now stay safe cheers for now bye